Morning. Redneck Bee Man. Just uh, picked up a, another swarm. These are all the swarm boxes we've been sticking out in this new little bee yard here. You've seen them all a couple of times. The duct tape is there just to hold the lids on. I moved a couple of them out here again last weekend. So we just put some sugar water on them. That's that jar there. We mix it um, half sugar, half water. One, one to one, whatever you want to call it. But uh, these are all doing pretty well. That's a new one. That was a, a split that we brought out here. This double deep right here is doing pretty well. That's another split that we brought out here from another one of the yards. And then we got, uh, this one here was, was a double deep. They weren't growing so well inside it. So one of the things that you need to worry about is you don't want to leave them too much space. They're better off being overcrowded than they are, um, than they are having too much space, you know, let them be overcrowded. They're overcrowded, put another box on, they'll fill it up and, uh, you don't have to worry about them not being able to keep it warm or, um, pests getting in there, you get wax moths and the small hive beetles and all that stuff. And then this one here is another one. This is the one we just brought out here. So you can see on the front of the hive, it's those little wood blocks, those are entrance reducers. Uh, helps them keep the hive protected. They have less entrance to protect. And that keeps a little less airflow in there. I mean, I use screen bottom boards, so it, it doesn't make too much of a difference on, on these hives here. Um, but it gives them a better place to protect. They keep the moths out. They keep wasps and bumblebees and so forth out. Um, and that hive there, I caught the swarm, moved it out here. Had some beetles in it, so we'll have to keep an eye on on that one. But uh, they seem like they're doing pretty well. I mean, they're they're acclimated. They're coming in and out. They found food, so they're they're doing all right. Now I think on the last video I talked about that sugar water and if you start feeding them um, you got to kind of feed them through the winter they start to rely on that food source but these bees out here there's a lot of woods out here there's some wild flower they have they have some food but not a whole lot so um, we'll probably feed a couple of these through the winter just to help them grow strong and then as soon as it hits you know March when it's warm we'll quit we'll see how they're doing um, I may quit soon here the uh, the food sources will really start to be done we've gotten some cold days here in Vero so it kind of ends all them flowering plants for them but we got a golf course that's nearby you know they got irrigation everywhere and there's a couple of groves out here so the orange blossoms um, They'll be starting soon, but there's still a lot of bees coming in and out with pollen. I'm not sure how much nectar they're actually actually getting. Um, but they're, they're still coming in and out with some food. So like I said again, the duct tape there, that's just to hold the lids on in the back of the truck because you don't want them things blowing out. This one here is doing this one here is doing really well. They may be crowding theirs out pretty soon. Take one more look at them. So I hope all of you had a good Thanksgiving. I know we did it our family. We um, made a turducken for the first time. And we've bought them in the past, but my brother and I, my brother-in-law and I made a uh, made the turducken this year. Now you can see on this one, this is a nuke box that I got. I usually just drill little holes in them. Like I was talking about the entrance reducer. Um, I leave this one out here. This is a, just a trap. Bees swarm somewhere around in the neighborhood. You may get get lucky and get one. This hive here is doing real well. This is a that swarm's been out here for a couple of months. They're built up. They'll be ready to make us some honey uh, come springtime. Another one. You can see that little hole in the corner. That's what we use to protect it. 
I don't have a feeder hole on top of this one. It's something we got to remember to to do. And you can see I leave all my my hives out here on bricks. It's because this area that we're in, it um, it can get wet, and the bees, if it gets up above that entrance, they got no way out. Um, they'll freeze. I mean, they'll they'll drown. I know a lot of the guys up there where it's really cold, uh, where it freezes and they get snow, they'll they'll drill holes in the top box. That way, if it snows up the top, they'll be able to get out. Oh, well. Just thought I'd show you another look. We got a couple of swarms. Show you the sugar water. Uh, we just use regular granulated sugar and clean water. Mix it up. Sometimes I cook it, heat it, but uh, if I'm going to make a lot of it, I just made a couple of jars today. We just shake them up real good. Put it in there. Cut a little hole in the top. I can open one up here and show you what's. So we got a little jar that's in there. And then down inside it, it's a screen. So I can take the jar off. A little hole in the lid of the jar. Tip it over on the screen. And it just drips. Feeds them. All right. Enjoy your nice cool weekend. Go outside, do something. Eat some honey. Relax. Mow your grass. Whatever you gotta do this weekend. Have a good day.